I can't tell you how proud I am of you for what you did yesterday. Then when that taxi driver told me about the night that he picked Mother up and took her to a bungalow somewhere on Laurel Falls Road, I... Well, I... All I could think about was that Mike's theory was right. That Mother deliberately took valuable things and placed them in Jennifer's bungalow to make it look like she'd been stealing from us. I really had no choice. What do you, yeah, sure you had a choice. You could have kept it to yourself, but you didn't. Took that guy straight down to see Judge Simmons and uh, help Mike get Jennifer another trial. Well, I had to. I know, but some people wouldn't have felt that way. If it had been Ross, he never would have gone to Judge Simmons. Ben, I can't believe that. I, mean, I just can't believe that anyone with a conscience would deliberately stand in the way of justice, especially a lawyer. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that, especially when the lawyer's whole career is riding on Jennifer's conviction. Let's not talk about Ross anymore, right? Fine. <sighs> oh, you know, I can't stop thinking about all the terrible things I'm going to have to hear during this retrial. Well, you just keep remembering that you want to learn the truth this time. I know. But if I ever have to accept that Jennifer was telling the truth and my mother actually tried ah, to... Ah, and don't jump to conclusions either. Right? You just... Just remember the reason that you did what you did yesterday. And that'll get you through whatever comes out in court. I want to know the whole truth, Ben. I really do, but... It just terrifies me to think about what that could be. Come on. And that's about all I can tell you, Mr. Stafford, without getting into a lot of medical jargon, which I think would only confuse you. Uh, Justin, you said that you watched the same operation being performed a short time ago. Was the patient about Dad's age? Yes, he is. He'd also had a previous operation to repair a rupture in the papillary muscle, just like your father. And how's he doing now? Well, he's leading a much more normal life with a lot less restrictions. Well, I think you'd settle for that, wouldn't you, Dad? Oh, I'd settle for anything that would get rid of these round-the-clock nurses, housekeepers, you flying back and forth to London every couple of weeks. I feel like a helpless invalid now. Well, I know you do, Mr. Stafford, and that's only causing you more anxiety. This is the worst possible thing for your condition. But Justin, you said you were going to have a, a, another surgeon from Chicago assist you if Dad agrees to a second operation? Yes, my father-in-law, Dr. Emmett Scott who also happens to be one of the finest cardiovascular surgeons in the business. Now, Mr. Stafford, uh, neither Dr. Scott or myself can guarantee a total recovery. So the decision has to be totally yours. Well, if I agree, when would you want to operate? Well, let's see. My wife and son and I are going to do... Well, Philip's not really our son. I, he's just very special to us. Uh, we're going to do a little skiing here in the Toronto area. I could call Dr. Scott in Chicago and alert him, and we could all meet at Cedars Hospital, say, in three or four days, if that's convenient. Well, I could arrange to take some more leave and drive down to Springfield with you, Dad, and, and stay on until you recuperated. Well, while I'm recuperating, you could uh, help the authorities down there who are looking for your sister. Well, I'm way ahead of you on that. Which reminds me, Justin, did... Did Ross ever say anything to you about receiving a colored sketch that my dad did of Jane Marie? I sent it to him along with a Christmas card. Well, he might not have even seen it yet. He spent the holidays in Chicago as a guest at the Chamberlain's. Ah, oh, well, when's he due back in Springfield, you know? I think he flew back yesterday. Apparently, a case he had prosecuted for the state has been granted a retrial. The Wex case? Yeah. I only spoke to him briefly, so I didn't get all the details, but I could tell that Ross wasn't too pleased. You know, I... I f still find it hard to believe that the same woman who came down here and asked me all those questions about your sister came to such a violent end. I'm waiting for an answer, Mr. Pearson. You haven't asked me one real question yet. Now, all you've done since you've walked in here is just throw a lot around a lot of uh, insulting insinuations, and I don't like it a bit. All I need is for you to explain this bill that you submitted to Mrs. McFerrin, and I'll leave. Well, my explanation is that I performed a lot of services for Mrs. Wexler, and I never got paid. So, you claim that you're a private investigator who does financial advising on the side. That's right. May I ask what qualifies you to be a financial advisor? Well, Mrs. Wexler, she thought that I was qualified, and that's why she hired me. But now she's dead, and I, and I just want my money. And Mrs. McFerrin wants you to have your money after I verify the fact. Well, maybe you don't realize this, but Mrs. McFerrin 
had me work for her also, and I first started to work for her mother. Perhaps you did. Perhaps you did, Mr. Pearson, but that was before I was in charge of either Mrs. Wexler's or Mrs. McFerrin's affairs. And now that I am, you're simply going to have to be a lot more specific about this before I can approve the bill for payment. Well, I don't have any time for that. Now, let's just forget the whole thing, all right? No, I think it's too late to forget about it, Mr. Pearson. Since you won't give me the answers I'm looking for, I'll simply turn this bill of yours over to the police and let them investigate the matter. Good day. Uh, Mr. Colby, now, wait a minute now. I, I don't want the police involved in all of this. Somehow, I didn't think you would. So why don't you just tell me what you really did for Mrs. Wexler? You sure this outfit isn't too dressy to wear in court? No, not at all. I think it's lovely, and I think the judge will like it, too. Thanks, Jenny. Listen, keep your fingers crossed, OK? I will. Of course I will. And listen, when I get out of here, I'm going to pay a visit to that lawyer of yours and tell him to get moving on your new trial. Oh, no, don't do that. Well, I, I, I don't want another trial. We just hurt a lot of innocent people. Jennifer. Why are you giving me my clothes? Well, you want to look nice when you go to court this afternoon, don't you? Court? Yeah, that's the word I got. They're going to start choosing the tr uh, jury for your new trial today. And you got to be there. Jen, I told you it happened. I told you. <laughs> And now, the award-winning Guiding Light. Well, now, you may think it's a streak of bad luck, Sanchez, uh, but I know for a fact that Alan Spalding accidentally found out that you and your men headed for St. Thomas to search for Dr. Moreno. And I'm just as sure that Alan knew for a fact that you were planning to meet his yacht yesterday morning. What other reason would he have had? Just flying back to the United States at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, well, you just as well go ahead and check out the villa that he and his company rented down in Jamaica. But if you don't find anything, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call the whole thing off. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Be in touch. You look like you could use this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, win a few, lose a few, I think somebody said. <laughs> At least you got Jennifer a new trial. You must be excited about that. Yeah, I'm sure that your brother is not as enthusiastic about it as I am. I think it will be good for Ross to sweat it a little. Just a second, I'll get there. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Hey. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> good to see you. Has Mike told you that the judge granted his request for a new trial? Yes, as a matter of fact, he called a few minutes after the meeting. Mike, if you need me for anything, I'll be at my desk calling your witnesses. Yeah, okay. okay. How you doing? I'm fine. I wanted to wish you good luck before you went to court today. Also, I was very interested to know Jennifer's reaction to all this. Uh, well, I don't know. You see, I tried to see her a couple times, and she wouldn't see me. Oh, no. But she has to be there today. Yeah, well, she'll find out, if she hasn't already. There's something... I hate to bother you with this, along with everything else, but I think you should know. Alan called this morning, Mike. He, he hit the ceiling when he found out Philip was skiing with Jackie and Justin in uh, Canada. Why? Well, he feels I'm being overly permissive with him for allowing him to take a few days off from school. Well, the school principal said no problem, right? Well, and I told him how much Philip wanted to go, too, but that didn't seem to impress him. He says I'm acquiescing to Philip's every whim. He says I'm spoiling him. Well, you're not. No, I'm not. But as an upshot of all of this, he has demanded now that Philip go off to Lincoln Prep, and he wants to discuss it with me. You didn't say anything to him about giving Jackie and Justin custody, did you? I, um, I didn't dare. However, if you can find the time, I think you should approach him before uh, Jackie and Justin bring Philip home. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't have to be in court till 3 o'clock. Maybe I could do it before then. Be careful, please. You're not having second thoughts about it, are you? Oh, no, no, not at all. I know I'm doing the right thing. It's just that Alan gets very ruthless if he feels thwarted in any way. Well, it's up to me to see that he doesn't feel that way. So don't worry about it, okay? I will. If you promise me one thing. 
Promise me no matter what happens, Alan will never learn the truth. He'll use it, Mike. He'll use it if he has to, no matter what it does to Philip, no matter how it undermines his security and confuses him. I mustn't let that happen. I think spending all day yesterday at home just resting did us both a lot of good. Well, I must admit I feel a lot better than I did after that 3 a.m. flight from St. Thomas. <laughs> but, Alan, I really, I wouldn't change a minute of our vacation for the world. It was the most exciting time of my life. Uh, except, of course, marrying you. You better say that. <laughs> so, what have you got on the agenda for today? Oh, I thought I'd go over and visit Grandma and talk to her for a while. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the day in my office going over my plans for the next few months. And I do have to talk to Rita about uh, decorating Uncle Ed's office. Oh, yes, good. Have you tried reaching her? Yes, I, I, as a matter of fact, I tried calling her before I came over here. I got Freddie, and he told me that Uncle Ed's taking him back to prep school. And then when, when I asked him where Rita was, he said he hadn't seen her in two days. Well, uh, perhaps she's working the night shift at the hospital. Well, I hope it's something like that. But, Alan, you do know Uncle Ed and Rita have had marital problems before. Oh, it's not that, darling. It's just that when you mentioned Freddie in prep school, I was reminded of a conversation I had with Elizabeth this morning. Oh, no, now what? I can't believe how permissive that woman is with the boy at an age when he needs discipline more than anything else. But, Alan, a child needs love as well as discipline, and, and Elizabeth certainly gives him plenty of that. Yes, but it's a suffocating kind of love, and it's going to turn that boy into a hopeless neurotic by the time he's 20, unless I do something about it, and soon. Well, Alan, you haven't forgotten you planned to have Philip spend some time with us now since you didn't get to spend the vacation with him. What I plan doesn't seem to matter. At this moment, Philip is in Canada skiing with Justin and Jackie. Well, what about his school? Elizabeth simply took him out of school. I tell you, there are going to be some major changes in my son's life, or I'm going to see to it that he's taken away from Elizabeth, and this time for good. Alan, you, 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 you couldn't seriously be considering taking Philip away from his own mother. Uh, I'm sorry, but you know how that woman gets to me. But Alan, you're so cold and unfeeling. It'll never happen again, I promise. Well, there, then you admit it. He's not the same man who was married to you, Pope. For your sake, I wish I could tell you I believe that's true. But inbred values are very difficult to change permanently. They usually resurface when you least expect them to. Mr. Stafford, I think you've made the right decision. Now, if you're going to drive to Springfield, is three days going to be enough time to uh, make that trip comfortably? Oh, no problem. We'll take it nice and easy. I'll see that the drive doesn't tire him out too much. I guess I should try to contact Ross and let him know I'm coming, but uh, I suppose with this new trial now, he won't have much time to help me in my search for Jane Marie. Well, I don't know about that. I know that uh, besides this retrial, Ross is also trying to get a political career rolling with the help of the uh, Chamberlains. Hmm. Has he announced his... Uh, Plans to marry Vanessa yet? I didn't think they were that serious at this point. Oh, well, from what I saw, Vanessa was extremely serious. And uh, she strikes me as a lady who usually gets what she wants. Well, you'll get no argument uh, out of me on that point. Uh, could I use your phone? I have to call Springfield. I'll, I'll make a collect. Oh, don't do that. It's right over here. Actually, on second thought, I should call from the hotel. I've left uh, Jackie and Philip out in that car long enough. You mean your wife and that boy I keep hearing about are out in the car? Why didn't you bring them in so I could meet them? Well, uh, we had business to discuss, and I... Well, that's over now. So, Chet, while Dr. Marler is making his call, why don't you go out and invite Mrs. Marler and Philip in? <laughs> sure, Dad. I'll just be in there. Uh, Mr. Stafford, is there another phone in the house I can use? Yeah, there's just down the hall, just the one on the left. Thank you. So if we can get Alan's signature on these, Jackie and Justin will have complete and total custody of Philip. All right. You, um, you didn't have Laney type this up, did you? Oh, no. I, uh, I don't think anybody should know about it until your decision is final. And that's why I had Derek's secretary do it. I see. It's going to be difficult enough to explain it without having to before the fact. All you have to do is tell them what you told Philip, that your job is going to make you do a lot of traveling and you just don't want him to be uprooted constantly. Excuse me, Mike. It's Justin. He's calling from Toronto. Oh. Oh, Justin. Elizabeth and I were just talking about you. Well, I'm uh, glad she's with you because the uh, reason I'm calling uh, involves her, too. What's that? 
Well, I know that Alan and Hope were getting home from their vacation yesterday, and, well, Jackie and I were wondering if you approached him about Philip yet. Uh, no, I'm going to uh, later this morning before I go to court, uh, so I'll let you know the minute I find out anything. <sighs> okay, thanks, Mike. Look, I gave Lanny uh, the phone number at the ski lodge where we'll be staying. Good. How long are you going to be there? Oh, two more days, and we'll head back towards Springfield. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, give my love to Jackie. I will. Give them my love. Tell them I hope they're having a good time. Okay, Elizabeth gives her love and says she hopes they're having a good time. Well, thank you. Listen, there's something I'd, uh, I'd like you to tell her for me. You should tell her that Jackie and I will never forget uh, what she's done for us. It's got to be one of the most unselfish things any human being's ever done. Well, we both know that she's one of the most unselfish people that ever lived, too. So, uh, we'll be in touch. Right. Bye, Mike. Right. All I have to do is to get Al to sign those before Jackie and Justin get back. Uh, Lenny? Yes? Uh, have you heard anything from Derek? No, but I wasn't expecting to. He said that he had something he was following up on for Ben. Do you know what? No. He said it was important, but that he would take care of it before he came by to help you get ready for court. If you were working for Mrs. Wexler as a private investigator, why do all your bills read as though you were her financial consultant? Well, she made me write them up that way, so that nobody would know the real reason that she hired me. She wouldn't even let me keep any copies of the records that I gave her. Are you telling me that you have no record of the information you obtained from Mrs. Wexler? Well, you can check my files yourself, Mr. Colby. Well, then I guess you'll just have to tell me the nature of the work you did for Mrs. Wexler. Oh, I'm sorry, Eva. That, that's confidential. Fine. Then you don't get paid. It's as simple as that. All right. I, I can tell you that when Mrs. Wexler first hired me, she wanted me to find a missing person. Who? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that, Mr. Colby. All right. Did you ever find the missing person? Well, I, I did locate the person's family, and I, and I told her, and she paid me, and she said that she would carry on by herself. I presume that that's what this bill is for. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. You got paid an awful lot of money for simply locating somebody's family, Mr. Pearson. Well, you, you have no idea how much time it took, Mr. Colby. All right, all right, fine. But you still haven't answered my original question, and that is, what is this latest bill for? Well, a, a couple of weeks ago, Mrs. Wexler, she called me again, and she asked me if I would continue the search for this person. Well, I was very surprised. Uh, but a job is a job. Why were you surprised? Uh, well, because once before, when I talked to her, she told me that she followed up with the family, and she found out that the person that she was searching for was dead. Are you sure? Positive. Naturally, I, w I was surprised uh, when she came in here and she told me that the person wasn't really dead at all. I know you couldn't talk the night I called you from the airport. What happened with that tape? Well, with Joe in the next room, I could hardly tell you just how incriminating it was, Alan. Well, I hope you destroyed it. Of course. But I made uh, very copious notes, which are locked in a very safe place in my apartment. Notes? Why in God's name did you make notes? Just in case Joe Bradley made duplicates of that tape, which I'm sure he did, so that when I find them, and I will, I'll be able to make sure that they are, in fact, duplicates and not some others that he's still holding back from us. <sighs> Why did we ever hire a double-crossing con artist like Joe Bradley in the first place? Well, that was my fault for not checking him out thoroughly enough. But at least Joe prevented Mike Bauer from bringing those tapes he got from Maria Avenatta back to Springfield. That's true. Mm. If it hadn't been for that, I'd be in prison. Exactly. And I think you should also know that we have Joe to thank for finding out that Sanchez and his men were going to be stationed in St. Thomas Harbor at daybreak yesterday morning, just waiting for you and Moreno to walk off that yacht. Joe got that information? How? Well, had a very clever suggestion from me. Joe was in Mike's office on a pretense of going over Andy Norris's financial prospectus when that call came from Mike. Diane, Mike Bauer isn't going to say anything in a phone conversation that would tip off Joe Bradley. Mike didn't take the call. It was some new young lawyer that Mike has helping him out. He took the message from Sanchez. 
Joe heard it, and he, he told me about it immediately, and that's when I sent you the radiogram. For which I will be eternally grateful. All I needed was to walk off that yacht with hope and find Sanchez standing there with a search warrant in his hand. Yes. Well, thanks to Joe, that didn't happen. Well, when Moreno decides where he wants to settle down, spend the rest of his life, I told him that one of us would fly down and meet the yacht and help finalize the arrangement. When do you think that'll be? I hope it's soon. With Moreno floating around the Caribbean and Sanchez carrying on an island-to-island -island search for him, I'm in jeopardy. Yes, come in. Ah. Hi, Diane. Alan, welcome back. Thank you. Nice to see you. How was your holiday? Oh, it was very nice. I uh, hope that your vacation was everything you expected it to be. Oh, yes. All that and more. Yeah. Ben, uh, I imagine you're here to pick up your check, am I right? Yeah. We still owe you money? Well, it's just one check, but I can really use it now because we're starting construction soon on the nursery for ah. our cottage. <laughs> Why don't you and Amanda just move up to her mother's house? No, I, you know, I don't think that either one of us would be very happy living there. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess I can understand that. You know, I heard on the news this morning that Jennifer Richards is going to have a new trial. Yeah, that's right. I just hope it's over fast for Amanda's sake. Mm. I'll get you your check. It's due next. Right. Well, what's this about a new trial? Mike has been pushing for another trial ever since Jennifer's convictions. You know, Mike, once he goes after something, he doesn't give up until he gets it. Uh, you know, Hope and I were talking about how little we've seen of you and Amanda. Perhaps we can have dinner one night soon. That would be wonderful. It'd be a good distraction for Amanda. You know, I mean, these, these last few months have really taken their toll on her. Yeah, I don't know how she's stood up under the pressure. I don't either, but she has. Alan, uh, as soon as the baby comes, I'm going to tell Amanda about Lucille's affair with your father. Are you sure that's wise? Well, it's just that she has so many unanswered questions about why your father left her all the money and the stocks and everything, and I just uh, think that if I tell her what I suspect, that she's really the daughter of Lucille and Brandon, that no matter how devastating it is at first in the long run, it leaves her mind. Perhaps. But don't you think we should wait until you have absolute proof? No way to get absolute proof now that your father and Lucille are, are dead. You know, we, and we can't find an antique box of Lucille's that was supposed to have letters and photographs in it. Antique box? Yeah, I'm sure that's where the letters from your father to Lucille are, and documents about Amanda, things that Lucille didn't want Amanda or anybody else to find. And you say it's disappeared since she died? Yeah. We searched the house about four or five times, no trace of it. Hmm. That's strange. Yeah. What's even stranger is that Maggie found the key to the box on the stairs. Now, Amanda thinks that somebody stole it and dropped the key on the way out. Well, I hope she's wrong. Because if that box did contain letters proving that Amanda is my father and Lucille Wexler's daughter, and those letters fell into the wrong hands, we could be blackmailed. And then Alan came into the stateroom, woke me up, and took me over to the porthole. And, and when I looked outside, we were sailing right toward my own island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could have been there to see the expression on your face when you realized that Alan had planned this whole elaborate scheme just to surprise you. Surprise me, Grandma? I was shocked. <laughs> Well, you look certainly wonderful now. Oh, hope. thank you. I feel just great. Except I'd feel even better if I found out just one other big piece of news. And what's that? That I was pregnant, and that our baby was conceived on our island during the most wonderful vacation any man ever planned for his wife. Hello. Oh, Hello. Amanda, Hi. how are you? Good Amanda. to see you. Oh, you look radiant. Well, I guess that's what being pregnant does to a woman. <laughs> we were just talking about that very same thing. You oh, no, 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 but I hope to be soon. Amanda, won't you join us, dear? Oh, thank you, Bert. Yes. I can't stay for very long because Ben should be here any minute to pick me up. Uh, oh, did you just have a doctor's appointment with uh, Dr. Sedman? Mm -hmm. I was supposed to have one yesterday, but uh, something came up. 
so I was lucky that she rescheduled it for this morning. Oh, yes, Grandma was telling me about the new trial. I hope it's not going to be too much for you. I'm not going to let it be. I promised myself that the only time I'm going into that courtroom is when I'm asked to testify. Amanda, I just want you to know how much it meant to Michael that you were the one who brought forth this new evidence, evidence he needed to get the judge to, to give Jennifer another trial. Bert, it's just very important to me right now to find out the truth, whatever it is, mm -hmm. so I can go on and start a life with Ben and our new baby. I couldn't oh. agree more. <laughs> Hi, you Hi everybody. In? How you doing? Oh. oh, my God. Look at that tan. I'm yeah, jealous. So <laughs> huh? yeah. Well, I told you and Amanda that you both are very welcome to use my island anytime you wish. Well, I tell you, after what Alan was just telling me about your trip, we might just take you up on that as soon as the baby's old enough to travel. You saw Alan? Yeah, I just stopped by the office. Oh, I wish you had waited for me so that we could go together. I haven't seen Alan in a long time. Well, he was just saying the same thing about you. As a matter of fact, he invited us to dinner one night soon. So uh, why don't we stop by on the way back and you can accept. Oh, yes, hmm? do that. And then you and I can get together and decide when it would be convenient time for all of us. All right. Well, it was nice seeing all of you. Nice, well, to nice see seeing you. Okay, take care. And uh, give our love then. to Alan. I will. We will. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. You know, I feel so sorry for that young woman. Well, they've been through a great deal of tragedy, both of them, but uh, they look pretty happy to me now, Bert. I know. And much as I want Michael to be able to clear Jennifer, I just wonder how Amanda's going to react when she realizes it was her mother who tried to kill Jennifer. Well, I'm just grateful that Ben's there to help her through it all. Yes, and so am I, too. Ooh, I better get to my office. Otherwise, Nola Reardon will help me out whether I want her to or not. <laughs> Nola Reardon? Yes, yes, this is just about the time that Nola begins to pick up. And if I'm not there to stop her, she'll come right into the office, sit down in Harley's chair by the desk, and starts going through all my papers. Oh, Steve, she doesn't really do that, does she? Mm -hmm. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, Grandma, as much as I would love to just sit here and talk with you all day, I better find Rita and start working on the plans for Uncle Ed's uh, office. I hope, I, I wish uh, you'd wait and uh, see Ed first. You can't see him now because he's driving Freddie back to school, but... Well, no, but I don't have to talk to Uncle Ed. He knows about it. It was Rita's Christmas present to him. Grandma, what's wrong? There's something on... The expression on your face is... Darling, I want you to promise me that you won't repeat this to anyone. Repeat what? Rita and Ed have separated again. Oh, no. Yeah. <sighs> Grandma, you know, I, I told Alan this morning that I called over there and Freddie answered the phone and told me he hadn't seen Rita in a couple of days, and somehow I suspected something was wrong. Well, Rita's moved back to her own apartment. Grandma, look, I promise you I won't tell anybody else, but I have to tell Alan. I mean, we're neighbors, and he'll be just as shocked as I am. Lori told me to come on in. Yes, of course. I was surprised when she buzzed me and said that you wanted to see me. So how's Hope? Marvelous. We had a wonderful holiday. Yes, Mom said that you went down to the island that you gave her. Yes, uh, I'd planned the surprise for months. Uh, well, please, sit down. Thank you. Ben McFerrin was here earlier. He told me he was starting jury selection this afternoon for Jennifer Richards' new trial. Yeah. So it doesn't give me much time, I better get right to the point. Of course. I'm here to represent Elizabeth. In what capacity? Well, she's very concerned about Philip. And she's made a number of decisions uh, about his well-being for this point in his life. Does this have anything to do with the telephone conversation that Elizabeth and I had this morning? Yeah, indirectly, yes. The point is, is that she's going to be spending a great deal more time in her photographic career. And while she's raising Philip on her own, she felt that... Excuse me. Elizabeth does not support my son on her own. I contribute handsomely. While we're correcting each other, I think you're aware that I know just as well as you do that Philip is no more your son than he is Elizabeth's. Where is this leading? As I started to say. She believes that her career is going to take her traveling a great deal more, and rather than have Philip travel from place to place, she feels that he should have a permanent feeling about home, as much as she'd like to have him with her. Well, for once, Elizabeth and I are in total agreement. I'd never allow it. 
As far as allowing it is concerned, you have nothing to say about it. Elizabeth is Philip's legal guardian, and as such, she has the right to make all decisions affecting his future. However, if at any point I feel that she is not acting in our son's best interests, I am perfectly free to go to a juvenile judge and file a complaint. That is my right as his legal father. I'm aware of that. I helped draft that document, if you recall. So what you're really here to discuss is Philip's future. Well, my feeling is that he should be enrolled at Lincoln Prep, where he can have the kind of education that... I'm not really, that uh, here to discuss your feelings about Philip. I'm here to discuss Elizabeth's feelings about Philip. And what are Elizabeth's feelings? Well, as you're no doubt aware, Philip has begun to feel that Justin's home is his own. And now that Justin and Jackie are legally married, Elizabeth has signed a document which gives them legal custody of Philip. She's done what? That's right. And she would like you to sign that to make it legal and binding. Never, never in this world. Before you say never, can't we discuss this rationally? There's nothing to discuss. Of all of Elizabeth's insane ideas, this is the craziest one yet. If you just let me give you her reasoning, I'll... Look, I'm you sure may be privy to the conditions of Philip's birth, but in the eyes of the law, he is still my son, and I'm not going to stand by and watch him given away to two perfect strangers on some lunatic whim of Elizabeth's. It's not a whim. She's given it a great deal of thought. Elizabeth doesn't it's... think she acts on him. As far as being strangers are concerned, Jackie and Justin love Philip, and he loves them. All this conversation tells me is it time that I took control away from Elizabeth entirely and raised Philip on my own. Hope and I have discussed this eventuality, and she'd love to have him with us. Maybe Philip doesn't want that. Have you thought of that? Philip's too young to know what's best, but I do. And there are going to be some major changes in his life when he gets back from this ski trip with Justin and Jackie. For everyone's sake, I don't think that's a very good idea. Why? Are they aware of this insane idea? Well, of course they're aware of it. She discussed it thoroughly before she made her decision. Her decision? I can't believe that as her attorney you would stand by and let it... Oh, I take that back. Of course, of course you'd have the gall to encourage that. It gives you two things to use against me. Elizabeth's madness and your detective in San Juan. Alan, believe me, I'm not trying to make this a personal tug of war, no matter what you may think. I'll tell you what I think. I think this is just the ammunition I've been waiting for, and Elizabeth is going to be very sorry indeed that she gave it to me. Ammunition? What are you talking about? I'm going to take her to court, and this time I'll win custody of my son. You have a very hard time pulling that off, Alan. Oh, I don't think so. Once the juvenile judge sees those papers and realizes that she was about to give up custody to her own son. She hasn't done that. She can't do that without your signature. It doesn't matter. The fact remains that she wanted to do it, and it's going to show that she is not fit to raise a boy Philip's age. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to call my attorney. I don't know why I'm bothering, but can't we discuss this like uh, two Laurie, rational... would you please get me my lawyer immediately? That's right. Oh, I forgot he was in Los Angeles on company visit. No, it can't wait. Well, uh, then uh, get me Neil Blake. Yes, that's exactly who he is. And anyone who was hard-nosed enough and tough enough to work for my father for as many years as Neil did is just the kind of lawyer I need now. What happened? I don't know why I ever thought I could deal rationally with Alan Spaulding. Oh, no. What? What happened? Well, when I presented him with your idea, he just started making all kinds of threats and exploded, and I just walked out. What kind of threats? Well, he was on his uh, phone with a lawyer. He's going to start proceedings to get legal custody of Philip. Mike, no. No, we can't let that happen. Don't, don't worry. I told you it would not happen, and I'm going to see that it doesn't, so don't worry. All right. All right, but you know the agreement. If it looks as if Alan would get custody of Philip, Jackie, Justin, and I will give up the entire plan. Yes, I know. But if Sanchez could find Moreno, we wouldn't have to worry about it because Alan's falling will be in jail within a month. Oh, Mike. Alan's so vindictive. I have a feeling I have started something that's going to turn into a hornet's nest for all of us. Including Philip. I was really hoping to catch Mike before he left for the court today. He'll be back. He just went out to lunch with Elizabeth Marler. Good, good, because I've got a piece of information he's going to find very interesting, and I want to tell him about it before he starts interviewing pr prospective jurors. Well, why don't you walk over to the courthouse with him? Then you'll be able to speak to him then. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that. Listen, has Ben McFerrin called today? No. 
Where could he be? I, I've been trying the cottage all morning and there's no answer. Was he expecting to hear from you? What does that got to do with anything? Very kindly. Hi. How was Elizabeth when you left her? Well, a little better. Mike, yeah. look, I found out something very interesting Derek, this morning. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Mike, your briefcase is all packed for court. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, look, Mike, I'm going to walk over with you because I think I should tell uh, you that... Could, could have wait, because I'm in a big rush right now. Uh, all right, I'd like it if you could stay here and then if Sanchez calls, you could get over to the courtroom right, uh, right away and tell me what happened. Sure. And we'll talk about it later. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way... You know, when I talked to you about Sanchez meeting the Spalding yacht, mm -hmm. you didn't by any chance say anything to anybody about that. No, of course you? not. Yeah, well, I didn't think so, but I just had to ask. Mm -hmm. hey, Mike, wait a minute. Now, there was somebody here when you called. Who? Well, it's a guy that wants to invest in Andy Norris's restaurant. His name's Joe Bradley. He's a friend of Andy's. Also works for Spalding Enterprises. Oh. Mike, I'm sorry. Had I known, I never... No, it's, it's not your fault. Things like that are bound to happen, especially when it concerns Alan Spalding. But his luck can't last forever. See you later. Give my best to Jennifer, Mike. Yeah. I can't believe I let something that important slip out. Just goes to show you're human. Just like the rest of us. What exactly is that supposed to mean? Think about it for a while. If you still don't know, I'll be in my office. I can't tell you how happy I am you stopped by, Amanda. Uh, I've missed seeing you. And I've missed seeing you. You know, I have to apologize to both of you for being in such a foul mood when you arrived, but I had received some distressing news earlier in the day and I haven't quite recovered. Does that mean I should sell all my stock in Spalding Enterprises as soon as possible? <laughs> no, no, no. The company's very secure. Just a personal problem. But uh, that reminds me, I want to make sure and see you at the annual stockholders meeting in March. Well, I want to be there, but it all depends on the baby. He's our number one priority right now. He? Are you so sure your firstborn's going to be a boy? Well, we don't really care, Alan, as long as the baby's healthy, right? Uh, pardon me, Alan, but that call you've been waiting for just came through. Oh, thank you, Diane. Uh, if you'll excuse yes, me. Yes, sure. Course. It was and, uh, wonderful seeing you. Wonderful seeing you, and you're going to get in touch with Hope now so we can have dinner one night I soon. I certainly will. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye, Dan. Thank God I thought of calling Neil Blake. Oh, he's out of the country. It's his assistant uh, returning your call. At this point, I just need help, and fast. Oh, hello, Hope. As I was saying, I, I checked with Emily, and Emily said that uh, next Tuesday would be fine. Oh, well, wait, we don't have any plans for Tuesday, do we? No, we don't, and the trial will be on at that point, and I'd really like to do something to keep my mind off that. Yeah. Well, fine, then uh, we'll say cocktails at 7.30? We'll be there. Certainly will. Okay. Goodbye, Hope. All right. Well, have a lovely evening. Okay. You too. Right, you okay. too. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. In that case, the minute Neil gets back, have him call me. I don't care. I'm so angry at this point. All I can think of is getting my son away from that lunatic for good. And if that means totally discrediting Elizabeth as a mother and bringing out her long history of mental illness, then do it. That's fine with me. Mike? Sanchez called. Anything from Jamaica? No. He checked the grounds of the villa Spalding Enterprises had rented. He talked to the staff, but no one had seen anyone resembling Dr. Marino. Well, that's the story of my life, isn't it? I guess when I get back to the office, I'll call him and tell him to call the whole thing off. Yeah. Would you rather I stayed here, or would you like me to go back to the office? I, I'd, I'd just as soon you stay here. Actually, I haven't seen Jennifer since the sentencing, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of dreading it. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Bowers' office. I I'm sorry, uh, operator. Could you please speak up? I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, overseas for Mr. Bauer. Uh, he's in court. I have no way of reaching him at the moment. May I take a message? Yes, yes. I'm Mr. Bauer's secretary. 
Uh, of course I'll speak to the party. Oh, yes. Hello. Uh, my name is Neil Blake. Yes, Mr. Blake. Uh, I'm still in Australia. I just got an urgent message to call Mike Bauer. Yes, he's been expecting you to call. Has he? Could you please tell me what this is about? This has been the award-winning Guiding Light. Fashions provided by Lily Rubin Salon, South Southwest, and Barney's. Furs by the Christie Brothers. Stay tuned for one day at a time on most of these CBS stations. Be sure to be with us Monday for another full hour of The Guiding Light.